around Bob and I like to make stuff. Last year, when we were at Megan's house, she built a cool sofa table to go behind her sofa. Am I a claim champ now? Totally. But since then, she has sold the house, the sofa, and the table. Today, we're at her new house where she has another problem that we need to solve. What's the problem? I have a circle antique table, and I have a rectangular space, and I need them to mesh together. Let's figure that out on a budget. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. So we are standing in the space that we're actually gonna be building something, but before we talk about the thing we're building, why are we building this? This table is super old, so that means that not a lot fits around it, mm. but I want to be able to fit my family sitting in this space and to share a meal together. And to do that, I really want this bench to fit perfectly around this table, but also fit right up in this space. My best friend, Molly, this is the table that was in her kitchen growing up. Her mom would make cinnamon rolls in a circle pan, and we would sit at this table and eat cinnamon rolls after having like our weekly slumber party. And that's like a pillar of my childhood and that's the only way I make cinnamon rolls now too. Okay so it's got to be a narrow bench that fits back in it allows us to fit more people around the shape of this table mm -hmm. which is really important and you said this was an antique table it's also a little bit lower than normal. It is. So we have to build seating lower than normal to match the table. Yep. Okay rather than just making a bench that you could like lift out we're gonna build it in so that we can hide stuff inside of it. Yep, want to be able to lift it up, add some storage in it so I can hide a couple of different things in there, maybe some toys. Awesome, so it's gonna be useful. We're gonna do it on the cheap mm -hmm. and it's gonna give you more space for your family. It sure is. Awesome, let's do it. We talked about the constraint of the shortness of this bench, mm -hmm. but we can't go so short that we cover up this register. So this is an air conditioning register where air goes into the system, it doesn't blow out, but we have to make sure that the same square footage is represented on the outside of this thing so we get the same amount of airflow. So we have to work around that, the small space, and are there any other constraints? Number one is budget. Okay. Uh, we recently moved in here, so I did a lot of different work throughout this place, so I want to make sure that that budget stays pretty tight. Okay, so let's play a game. How much do you think is the lowest we can spend to build this thing? The way that you want it, because that's okay. an important the thing. The way I want it. We don't want to build it really cheaply looking. We want it to look like you want, but mm -hmm. what's the lowest number you think we can make that happen? Uh, could it be 150? I don't think so, but we'll give it a shot. <laughs> I think it'll probably be closer to 300. So okay. that's our range. We're going to make sure that we fit it within that range, and we'll see how close we can get to the 150. Okay. Cool. I will win. Perfect. The first way we're going to save money is by planning out this build from start to finish. And we'll do that by going into Fusion 360 so that I can see exactly how many supplies that I'm going to need from the store. The important thing about using something like Fusion, which we prefer, is that you can make all your mistakes digitally. You can change the design as many times as you want before you ever buy a piece of wood, before you ever make a single cut, or spend any money. We have a course that will teach you how to do that. We'll put links down below. But we've already done that work and you have the model ready, right? Yep, let's go check out that model. So we designed out my kitchen in Fusion. We know exactly what it was going to look like. And I was able to drop in that dining bench that I wanted right into Fusion. One of my favorite parts of this is that I was able to pick out exactly what wood I wanted for this seat top. So we could go to the store and I knew exactly what I wanted to get. Now that we have this set, let's go get the stuff. And now we're in Megan's shop, which used to be a backyard, but now it's a garage full of tools. I know, I upgraded since the last time that we worked together. I have all of these tools that I inherited from my friend's dad, and the best part about investing in these tools is that I'm gonna be able to use them over and over again. So whether you invest in secondhand tools or in brand new tools, they're gonna be used. So now that we've got tools, we've got a place to work, we have cut lists from Fusion so that we can actually start making the project. Yep. So which one of these do you want to do? I'll take miter saw. Okay, so she's on miter saw, I'm on table saw. Let's cut some wood. Another way that we saved some money was by spending the extra time at the hardware store to go through the less desirable wood that they had because they were $2.88 a board. And I found some really great boards in that stack as opposed to the premium boards that you can pick up right off the shelf and go, and those were $8 a board. Megan's on the miter saw. I'm gonna handle the table saw for now. They already got a lot of the plywood pieces that we need cut down at the store, which is a fantastic way to take advantage of somebody else's saw, but we also have to make the tops. And for the tops, we're actually gonna be using these laminated boards. This is a great way to get a slightly thicker, really big piece of solid wood, it's not plywood, 
it's just laminated other pieces. So we're gonna cut these down to the right length on the table saw, get all the plywood cut down to its exact measurement, and then we'll be able to start putting it together. We got all the pieces cut the other day and you've already got some of the pocket holes put on these, but tell me about your jig. So I got this jig from a local auction site and I got it for over 50% off what the MSRP price is on this. So whenever you're going to look to save money for other things that you're gonna need around your house, check out some local auction sites or local bargain stores because they are buying these things either open box or brand new things that other people have returned for a lot cheaper than what they run. And that's for like tools and decor and all sorts of stuff. You've got other things for this project that we'll see later on. So she's gonna finish out the pocket holes and I'm gonna go cut down the few pieces that we need to cut with a jigsaw. This video is sponsored by AG1. AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement. It's basically a drink that has 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, nutrients that your body needs to work as well as it can work. So first thing in the morning, I get up and mix a cup of AG1 into eight ounces of water. I drink it really quickly and it actually tastes good. That sets me up for a great day from a nutrition perspective. It's a very simple process, it's easy to drink, and if you're traveling, they've got travel packets. So you can just take that with you, mix it into some water, and you're good to go. Now specifically, it helps with your gut health and your immunity health, but it also helps with focus and energy. It's kind of like having the energy from a bunch of coffee without the caffeine crash at the end of the day. You can get started today by going to drinkag1.com slash I like to make stuff. Now I'm gonna read this because this deal seems kind of crazy to me. AG1 is going to give you a free one year supply of AG1 vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packets with your first purchase. A year supply is pretty crazy. Go check it out, you're really gonna like it and it will be good for you. Big thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. So I've gotta cut out these pieces and I've gotta do this little notch here so that your feet can kinda of tuck underneath the bench while you're sitting there. I'm gonna use a jigsaw for this and I wanted to point that out because a jigsaw is one of those tools that will make a cut like this very easy but it's also a really flexible tool that's definitely worth having in your basic toolkit. You can use it for all sorts of things. All of the pieces for the frame and the whole structure are ready to go. I wanted to show you this. So we printed out the back view of the entire thing from Fusion and labeled every piece so we know which ones to use in which places. And basically we're just gonna make kind of sub-assemblies of all these little sections and then start to join them together. This is all easy to follow because we built the thing in Fusion. Who likes to make stuff? I oh, likes to make stuff. One of the things about building in a garage on a concrete floor is that they're often uneven. This one is very uneven, uh, but it makes it so that putting two pieces together, they're not always square, not always the way that they should be. So we're working on the flattest surface we have, which is the top of the table saw. And if that's all you've got, it's a pretty good place to work. Okay, we've got this thing put together, except for the tops. And before we take it in there to fit it and make sure that it actually works in the space completely, we have just a little bit of edge banding we need to do on this outside edge. Now, luckily, uh, they designed it so that there is not a lot of edge banding needed. And this is actually a pretty good area that if you wanted to just cover it with wood filler and then sand it down, that would probably work. But since it's a small amount, we're gonna do a little bit of edge bending, trim it up, and then we can take it in there and fit it in place. So in this case, we built this outside. 
We fit it together and this corner's not quite square. We have a little bit of trim that's hanging over differently top to bottom and stuff like that. So a few things we're gonna have to work around, which means while we're putting this together and figuring out the trim that we're gonna put on the top and the back, we're just gonna have to like fill some gaps and figure out how to get it to fit in place. That's always gonna be the case if you're building something custom to your house. Last night, Megan painted this whole bench black and it's looking great, but I still need to add a piece of trim right here to transition between the bench and the wall. So I'm gonna work on that while you work on what? I'm gonna make a cushion for the top of this bench using a foam mattress pad and some leftover fabric from a previous project that we worked on together. So it's gonna look really good and save some money by using stuff I already have. We've got these cut, put in place, but now we need to add some hinges. Now, if you just put in regular hinges and you accidentally let go at the top, they're gonna slam down and probably hurt little fingers. You don't want that. They do make torsion hinges, which help with that, but they're very expensive. So we're gonna do a combination of things. We've got some full overlay hinges we're gonna put on the back of these to connect it. And then we've also got some gas struts that we can put on the side to help soften it as it closes. Both of those pieces of hardware combined are still cheaper than the torsion hinges and we'll do about the same thing. There's a bunch of different types of hinges. I did mention that these are full overlay hinges. I wanted to explain what that meant a little bit. So I've got these mounted. This is the back of the cabinet where it's gonna attach. So it's basically gonna sit like that. And then when you open the entire thing, these pieces can rotate past each other, which means you can have this back all the way up against the back of the bench and it will still open. The last thing we had to make for this was a grate to cover up this big hole that I cut in the front of it. And that's so that we can have the airflow go through into the register. Josh cut this out on the laser at a quarter inch material. And if you don't have a laser, obviously you could buy a grate from the store that would work just as well. And you could even paint it black so you didn't see it. Now that you've seen the entire thing, and it looks great, by the way, how much do you think this entire transformation actually cost? We're gonna tell you in just a second, but first, Megan, tell me about all the different ways you save money on the decor. Saved a lot of money. I got these pillows for 25 cents a piece from an auction site, brand new, $40 at Target. I also got a new mantle at our fireplace, so I was able to repurpose the old one as a floating shelf. All of this decor is repurposed from inside our house, so I spent nothing on any of this decor. And one thing that you can also know is you can rent tools at your local hardware store. You can rent a miter saw for like 30 bucks at a Menards. So that's a pretty great way to save money if you don't wanna like buy the tools for yourself. Okay, so I guessed that this entire thing would cost about $300, and you said? 150. And how much was it? It was $160. I was way off. Let us know if you were right or you were wrong down in the comments. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for bloopers. Ready? Guess it, guess it. Action. Action! <laughs> okay. 
Shut up, bird. <laughs> Megan painted this whole thing black and it's looking great, but it does need a little bit more work. <laughs> hey, I'm sure. <laughs> 